quick recap of what we did last time. Our basic filtering uh, that model was this, uh, the input was a 0 mean uh, random process x n, okay. w 0 to say w capital N with the filter taps, we have to filter it, y n filter such that if you take the difference between the filter output and the desired response d n, the error e n. It is also random process 0 mean because d n also 0 mean, it is mean square value variance should be minimum. That we saw to be a quadratic function of the weights and therefore, you can minimize them by differentiating that mean square value of the error with respect to each weight and equate it to 0 and you get a solution which in this case gives minima, you get the optimal filter, optimal filter was w opt sorry w opt was r inverse p, r was e of x n, x transpose n, all real valued case, that is why it is transpose only, no Hermitian transpose and p was d n, cross position vector. Then we said that since it is a quadratic function, suppose I do not know how to compute inverse of a matrix, but since it is a quadratic function, it has got only one minima, if you really plot this quantity epsilon square, which is the variance, and remember variance is independent of n, that we have already also shown. Uh, Okay, if when you took out the expression for E n and replaced this by square n and all that, n disappeared because of stationarity and joint stationarity between x n and d n. Because how far the joint stationarity comes, you see this p vector, p vector is independent of n. There is a correlation between x n vector and d n, but it is independent of n, is not it? So, because that is the joint stationarity. So, we said that time that uh, since epsilon, if I plot epsilon square, in an uh, n plus 1 dimensional space where 1 axis is epsilon square and other axis, each of other axis is one weight or other, then it will be such a function that has only one minima and everywhere else it will be going up, up, up. It cannot have local maxima, so it ca only ca can have, can go up. Like in the simple case of uh, single tap filter, it can be something like this, a single tap filter that is, uh, you know, this could be the optimum it can only go up up, it can never be like this, it can never come down. If it tries to come down, there will be a local maximum form, which cannot take place because it is a quadratic function. If you minimize, if you differentiate it with respect to the weight, you get only a linear equation with one, one solution. So, it will go up up. So, if that be the case, then we can follow a iterative procedure, we said that is suppose at i s step of iteration, we are having some weight. So, that time we find out the gradient here. If the gradient is positive, no point in going to this side because we will be going further away, going the opposite direction. If the gradient here is negative, go in the right side. So, that means you go in the opposite sense of the gradient. If gradient is increasing, you go in the opposite direction. If gradient is decreasing, go in the same direction. Okay. So, from that we derive the steepest decision algorithm. From W i, we said we will go for W i plus 1 by taking going against the gradient. So, we did this, we have this is what we did. This del is a de derivative operator, it is nothing but just a vector form where all the partial derivatives of epsilon square with respect to w 0, w 1 dot 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 are put one after another in a vector form. That derivative there is a gradient, here this figure was only for one variable, when you have multiple variables, multiple tap weights, then it becomes a vector of partial derivatives and that you are evaluating at the particular iterate w equal to w i and from the current iterate you are subtracting. So, if the gradient is positive, you are going in the opposite direction. If the gradient is negative, we are going in the same direction and mu y 2 is a proportionally constant, mu is called a step size and then we 
simplified it, we knew the formula of gradient which we worked out the last time and we what we got was this mu into p minus r w i, this is what we got. Okay. But this is still an offline, this is still an offline procedure because given the p and r value, you will just do it iteratively sitting at home. Then I wanted to say that I want to do it in real time. So, first thing was to replace index i by n. So, at every clock cycle, I have one, I mean, step of iteration. Okay. So, 0th clock cycle, 0th unit of time means that time I am doing the 0th initial state. Then first cycle means first iteration, second cycle, second is like that. So, I am running that of like this procedure iteration, but in real time. Even then, it is not adaptive, it is because you are still using the given value of p and r, but suppose that is also not given. Then I said that r and p, normally what is r? After all, if you want to estimate r, it will be what is r? r is expected value of x n into x transpose n. So, you should take one x n vector multiplied by x transpose n. Take another vector say x n minus 1. What is x n vector? Starts at x n, then x n minus 1, x n minus 2 up to x n minus capital N, is not it? x n minus 1 vector, it will start at x n minus 1, n minus 2 dot 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 x n minus capital N minus 1. So, so on and so forth. So, you take x n vector multiplied by x transpose n, take x n minus 1 vector multiplied by x transpose n minus 1 dot 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 maybe you do it 100 times and then add an average divide by 100 that will be a good estimate of r. Similarly for p, but I said that suppose I use a weird estimate, I just do not take so many, I take only one. So, r I replace by only this and let us see how it works and suppose p I replace by x if I can still prove that the convergence to optimal filter in some sense will work out, we will take place then I am through. So, if I replace this from this, I will not show the derivation, it is very simple x p u replace by x n into d n or x n into x transpose n, x n and x n take out mu into x n. So, d n minus x transpose n w n, x transpose n w n is same as w transpose n x n. In this case, they become actually function of n now which is the filter output and d n minus filter output is error. So, what we got was the LMS algorithm, okay, that is what I stopped last time. Hmm. So, I start from that today. So, your for the n plus 1 th cycle, iteration cycle or time cycle, the weight filter weight vector is w n plus 1 that you get from w n by this. You understood how it came, na? You replace p by x n d n, r by x n x transpose n. Take x n common. That is why this x n is coming up. And then within bracket, this d n first minus x transpose n w, which is same as w transpose x, w r n, and w transpose x n is same as y n. So d n minus y n, which is d n. So this is the algorithm. But that means, what are the steps? This is one step called weight update. Filter coefficients also called filter weights. Weight update. But before that, I must have E n, is not it? So, what is E n? E n is d n minus y n and therefore, I must have y n. What is y n? Y n is in terms of given w, w transpose n x n vector. Okay. So, it is like this for n equal to 0 to say some final and then you start this iteration with some initial value w in it. Normally, we take that initial value of the this weight iterate to be 0 vector. Okay. This is the LMS algorithm. There are two main operations. One is the filtering operation and the weight update operation, which consume computation. Okay. We can draw an architecture for this, maybe sometime later I will do. In another class, I take the architecture and uh, then pipeline and make a faster version, you know, but uh, here I am not doing, but I might do it. Okay. This is the most celebrated algorithm, spend some time on it. This is called the LMS algorithm, basic LMS algorithm. It is by far the most popular algorithm. In 80s, another class came up, totally defined in approach in derivation called recursive least squares, which tried to which gives more accurate, more I mean, faster convergence, 
like here w a, you will go on iteratively we will show that it will converge, but that algorithm are less recursively square means faster convergence, but that has some pro problem in structure and all that ok, it is not easy to implement. This is by far the most popular even I mean, this has stood the test of time ok. This algorithm you see if I indeed had followed the exact steepest descent may be changing i to n also does not matter whether you are doing offline with iteration index i or online with iteration index n as long as you are doing this equation this is the exact steepest descent exact p exact r. Then obviously, for proper choice of mu you understand you will go like this you will hit upon this that is the filter weight will directly converge on the w out directly the error between them will be exactly 0 it will exactly become equal to that. But you have understood that I have not given you exact p exact r I have made brought in some weird estimate. So, obviously after that the algorithm that you get you cannot expect that to behave like the you know pure space descent is not it. So, there is some compromise, but still that will converge this convergence proof I will work out little later, but it will converge in, in what way that if you take see w n after all is generated in this algorithm from data. So, w n also is a random process w n also is a random process is it? because every time suppose you run the iteration so from 0 to say 500 you get a sequence of w w 0 w 1 I mean w vector 0 for iteration 0 w vector 1 iteration like that you get a sequence. Next time again you run the algorithm you get another sequence so you, get, you do not get the same thing because data is changing after all these weights are generated by data you put initial vector 0 vector this data comes up that generates the new vector new weights put that back again new data vector. So, basically filter weights are driven by data, generated by data. So, that is a random process. So, in that case, so if it is a random process in that case what I suggest that uh, not suggest what happens is this ideally I would be very happy if I could show that as n tends to infinity this vector converges to w opt is not it, but it will not happen because obviously you know we are not following the exact steepest descent. So, what happens? If you take the expected value of w n, what is the expected value of w n at each index n? You have got a set of filter weights, take a particular one, say 0 th filter weight, just take that only separately. That particular one for the chosen n is a random variable, whereas next time you run the algorithm, you will get some defined value for that n for that filter weight at that index. So, it's random. So, every time you do this, it will be fluctuating that particular filter weight at a particular index n. So, it has a mean then go to n plus 1 again that n plus 1 that filter weight will have some value for this run of the experiment next time we run again its value will fluctuate. So, it will have a mean. So, the mean will converge this can be proved that this will become w opt that means this will prove that means suppose you consider only one tap filter to start with only one tap filter and this is your w opt only one tap filter this is time index and this is your w opt so this this is your w opt ok. So, maybe this w n it is a fluctuating thing maybe it will be fluctuating like this here. So, it is mean is here not on this maybe after a while it is it, it fluctuating maybe here it is mean is here. So, and so maybe here, maybe after the while it will be here, maybe after the while it will be here, but finally it will be like this. Okay, this much we can prove, but that is not enough. Obviously, you can ask the question even if it convergence in mean, if it fluctuates like this, then what good it is? The next time after that, we have to consider the spread, the variance also, then we will see how the variance will be kept bounded. That is a very lengthy analysis, but I am I'm afraid I have to carry it out. Very lengthy kind of boring analysis, lot of term, lot of very uh, messy statistical analysis, but you would also get a flavor of how to carry out those analysis. That is a very I mean that might take one or two, two days in fact. That I will do later. Okay, there is a mean square error analysis. Hmm. But this proof is very nice. Now, before I do that, I come back to more general case now. So long I dealt with real valued optimal filter steepest descent LMS. Now, I want to go, go for more general case of complex case 
that is x n is complex valued x n complex valued other things are same complex valued 0 mean w s s those are fine and given r which is now a complex matrix by Hermitian always it is e of x n vector into x Hermitian x n vector is the same as original one I am not changing the definition of x n vector only thing is that x n now consists of your uh, complex valued random sample okay more general case also given p x n d Hermitian n which is same as d star n because d is a scalar no question of transposition so d star n you can put conjugate n these two are given to you obviously the filter weights also will be complex valued y n complex valued but 0 mean because it is 0 mean d n also complex valued and therefore e n also complex valued fine now we will introduce an we will have some notational uh, things you know I mean we will introduce some notation you should have you put w 0 dot 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 say w n as your filter weights is not it and they are complex valued in this case in general because I am dealing with complex data this is complex valued hmm. but instead of putting w 0 to w n in the filter let me take their star values ok it does not matter complex I will what I am trying to say that I will in the end find out what is w 0 what is w 1 dot 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 what is w p w n sorry this vector I will find out if I find out w 0 you know what is w 0 star you know what is w 1 star you know what is w n star so I will find out w I will find out the optimal filter version for w but in the filtering I will use w star to w n star there is no problem no this is the notation thing I want to make clear my purpose is to construct the filter you could otherwise put w 0 here w n no star and instead find out w 0 star w 1 star w n star because that is how the derivation is the derivation will take the conjugate of this and find out but after you find out you can construct the filter so either you remove the star here bring the star here we put the star here and find out w once you find out w you know what the filter is ok this is just the notation so that means if this is w what is y n here can you tell me w what times x n w Hermitian times x n that is the thing I want to do actually if I call let us call this w in fact uh, let me not bring n here because so far it is not adaptive only when it becomes adaptive then I just brought in the index n and all that so to start with it is not adaptive just I am trying to find out what are the optimal set an optimal winner filter. So, some w i start with and w h. So, y n is w h x n no problem because this, this is my w and I said in the filter there will be star this is just a notation nothing else there will be complex value coefficient you can either take them to be the way they are you can take them to the conjugate of some uh, other variables and you find out those variables w 0 w 1 then once you know w 0 you can construct w 0 star w 1 star dot 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 ok essentially whatever you have here you take the conjugate of that form a vector the derivation will give you that vector that is how the derivation is but there is nothing wrong once I know the vector I also know the filter weight just have to conjugate that is all so y n is this epsilon n this time is not e square this time it will be mod e n square out of complex and mod e n means e a e h n ok mod e n square scalar number so e and e star the same as e n and e h n and now you have got ok 
same quantity with Hermitian and now we expand. If you expand d and d Hermitian that will give you E mod d n square which is the variance of d n because d n is a 0 mean process. So, mod d n square expected value that will be the variance you can call it sigma d square. It is of no importance to us here because it does not depend on the filter weights. After derivation this will go. The two cross terms earlier was earlier were same. Now, this time the, they will not be same. One is the conjugate of the other. Earlier this conjugate fellow was not there. I will repeat it. So, the two cross terms were same. Now, this because of this I have to write the things directly. Okay. W H x n d star n e of that minus e of d n x h n conjugate x h n w plus other term. Very simple. And you see E will work only on this part or here only on this part W is not random. Okay, I am just trying to find out a particular set of W which is optimal, but W is not random here unlike the LMS. Okay, w is just a constant I want to find out, it is an unknown constant and here also E will work on this. So, obviously, here you will get E of x n into d star n means the given p vector and here you will get p Hermitian E over this is p Hermitian. Right? If you take the Hermitian of this, Hermitian after expectation or Hermitian before expectation then, then apply E you will get the same thing is it? You make it rho and conjugate and then E or you take E and then make it rho and conjugate will other same. So, expected value over this means P Hermitian times W okay. and here E will work on this part only which is R. So, W Hermitian R W sorry there is no N I am again making a mistake. Hmm. So, if you do that substitution very quickly sigma d square minus P sorry W H P minus P H W minus W H or W. Okay. This is epsilon square is a real quantity, no doubt about it. Also, it is you know independent of n because of stationarity, as you saw in C in R and P in no n is there. It is a real quantity, but it is a real quantity is a function of a set of complex numbers w 0 to w n or w 0 star to w n star which one you want to see you want to see as this way or that way right. Each complex number has got both a real part and imaginary part. So, actually there are 2 n number of 2 n plus 1 2 n how many here 0 to n means n plus 1. So, twice that that many 2 into n plus 1 that many variables real imaginary real imaginary it is a real function of 2 into n plus 1 number of variables each complex number has got two variables and then I have to then to find the minimum I have to differentiate it with respect to both the real part of each complex variable and the complex part. Again real part of another complex variable, complex part of that variable so and so is it it. So, it is more complicated than the previous case. Now, before I proceed further you keep these results let us do some again let us compare to some basic matrix facts and all that. Hmm. Suppose I have a function epsilon square general function it is suppose a function of say one random variable z hmm. and z is say x plus j y, but epsilon square is a real function, real function that is very important, very very important and I have to find out del epsilon the minima of this, this also given it is a quadratic function or some function that is a minima, I have to find out the minima minimum or maximum whatever I have to differentiate it and equate to that means I have to take del epsilon square del x equal to 0, del epsilon square del y equal to 0 is it it. So, if I instead I define I form a defi definition of uh, 
you know del epsilon square del z. I don't know, I don't know this correct or not this notation. Okay, strictly mathematically is correct or not I don't know, but suppose I just define it. This is equal to del epsilon square del x differentiate with respect to x, also differentiate with respect to y and put a j here. And then if I equate it to 0, even then this will be 0, this will be 0. 0 means complex 0, 0 plus j into 0. Is it? So, instead of having two equation with this definition, if I proceed with this, if I proceed and equate to 0, still I will get the same minima. Okay. Then suppose epsilon square is not a function of z, it is a function of z star. Still, it is a function of real function of x and y. Suppose z star comes here in this function, but finally, it is a real function. So, still again, it is a still a real function, okay. but still function of x, y only and again I want to find its minima. So, again I have to do this del epsilon square del x equal to 0, del epsilon square del y equal to 0. So, even if it is a function of z star, if I use the same definition, and equated to 0, I will still get the minima here, because after all I am interested in this being 0, this being 0, is not it? It does not matter whether it is a function of z star or z, essential thing is it is a function of x and y. I have to minimize it, I have to form, form del epsilon square del x equal to 0, this also equal to 0. So, even here if I make this, def, I mean use this definition and equate that to 0, I will still get the same minima, is not it? Even though it is not f z, but f of z star. So, even the function which is function of z star, if you want to find the minima, I have to take the derivative of that as per this definition with respect to z, not this complex z star, but z and equate that to 0. Nothing will change, I will still get this, this equal to 0, this equal to 0 means the required minima point, because after all it is a function of x and y only, a real function. Only thing is if you want to find out which z star, you should say okay, x minus j y, that much z star at that z star, this is minima. When you talk in terms of z or z star, then you say it is a function of z star and that z star equal to this x minus j y, this will have minima. But in terms of x and y, there is no problem. Even if I differentiate with respect to z as per this definition equal to 0, I will still get the same solution for x y, is not it? Then if you say that okay, at that z star, at which z star this is minima, you say form this x minus j y, say at this z star this is fine. If that be the case, using this definition, you see some nice things. Suppose I give you two real numbers, scalars, but complex values A and Z. A is a complex value, Z is a complex number, A into Z or Z into A. Hmm. And I say you differentiate this with respect to Z as per this definition what will that be? As per this definition, you write z equal to x plus j y. Okay. So, a x, a I do not need to expand, because it is a constant, a is complex, but I do not need to expand, a x, <coughs> you replace z by, I am not showing those steps, or should I do show those steps? a into x plus j y, is not it? Now, I apply that definition. This quantity, if you differentiate with respect to x, this quantity with respect to x, with respect to y. If you differentiate with respect to x, you get a. If you differentiate with respect to y, you get j into a. And there is another j here, j into a, so you get 0. This you can extend here also, what is the problem? Even if it is not real, it is a function, okay. I mean I stuck to this because that error was real, but if you just consider a into z, this is a good question, a into z. Okay, if I extend the definition here, this can be extended, I mean I, so I do not see any problem. This is my definition on complex derivative. 
whether it is real quantity or complex quantity defines it like that. Because on the left hand side I will follow that. So, I have to do the same thing on each of the term on the right hand side. Okay. On the left hand side if I do that I will do the same thing on each term on the right hand side. But because of bringing this j and all actually this is a smart mathematical trick nothing else. The bringing by j, j here you can make this cancel by clubbing the 2 and bringing a j. Okay, some simplification. So, it is just a mathematical trick nothing else. On the other hand if it is not z, but say a into z star. A into z star, then that means and you get a and plus j times minus j a, is not it? So, you get 2 a. Again, mind you, this is purely my construction. I constructed a definition, I am not deviating from my original goal of minima because ultimately it was partial derivative for you to write them separately equal to 0 or <coughs> under the same banner, you form a club them like this and equate to 0, you will hit upon the same minima because our target is get that minima. As far as that is concerned, we are not making any change, mind you. I am only doing some jugglery actually, some mani mathematical manipulation. I brought in a definition so that in some places j j can, uh, this cancels and some places I mean you get 0 and you get twice a, that is all. Isn't it? But essentially, I will be minimize, I will be taking the derivative of that with respect to real part, imaginary part, real part, imaginary part, all the weights equal to 0. I get some solution. The same thing I will get if I take del epsilon square with respect to first weight as per this definition equal to 0, with respect to second weight as per this definition equal to 0. Because there also you can separate out these parts, real part is may be equal, that is the solution that we will get. Okay. But by clubbing this, this is a mathematical trick I am applying to get some of this nice thing, which the real thing simplification. Okay, that's it. So, if that be the case, now let me extend it a little bit. These are, these are just scalars. Now, suppose I have got some vectors. So, some vector w hurl is here, some vector t. That is w 0 star w 1 star dot 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 w k star dot 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 w n star dot p vector. p has p 0, p 1, p 2 like that. Okay. So, this is a function of earlier I took that case of z star and not z. Here also this thing is a function of the conjugates of the complex number. Earlier I had only one scalar complex number, I took either that number itself or star, z or z star. Now I have got one number here, another complex number here, another complex number, it is a multivariable case. But suppose I want to differentiate this above with respect to a particular one, w k. Okay. Firstly, others will go, only you have to hit upon this. Others will go, is not it? Because W k. So, W k star and from here P k will come up, k s term, W k star P k. So, this will amount to del W k star P k, two scalars divided by del W k. I mean, this not divided by, never assume that you know d x dy means d x divided by dy. <laughs> and this we have seen is twice P k. Is not it? When you have start, there is no problem, no zero comes up twice P k. Obviously, this means del w hmm? that is what if on the other hand you have the other term P Hermitian W. Do I have to do it or you can see yourself? If you do this take the general term because p Hermitian means p 0, p 1 dot 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 all star multiplied by w 0, w 1 take the kth term because you are differentiating with this to w k only the kth term. So, that will be p k star w k that if you differentiate with this to w k as per the definition it will get to 0 is not it. So, this will be a 0 vector 
one result, another result. And the other thing is, now you take this quantity W Hermitian or W. That again I follow the same procedure as I did earlier. What is this? Odd W is a vector, W Hermitian is another row vector, row vector, column vector. So, 0 is into first element, first element, second element, second will like that. 0 is element, 0 is element, only multiply and add. So, that means I equal to say 0 to n W i, but because it is Hermitian, W is star, isn't it? W i is a row vector, star, so W i star, and whatever be the odd W thing, i is element of that. Absolutely same steps. Whatever the RW vector, ith element of that and ith element of this guy start and you sum. This is the mean. And then what is RW? It is ith element means ith row of r times the vector. This is a matrix, this is a vector. So, ith row of r times the vector that will give the ith element of this real thing vector, is not it? or i j w j and now suppose you want to differentiate this you want to differentiate this this quantity with respect to w k for a particular k then as before i will take this summation i equal to 0 to n out of that i equal to k that case will be separated out but i not equal to k. You can see this, no? And then the k, k i equal to k case. i equal to k means k j W j. Okay, I have to differentiate this with respect to W k. So here W k does not occur, but for each W i star, there is a summation in which W k occurs when j equal to k. So that times I have R i k W k. R i k W k. R i k could be complex or real. I don't care. R i k W k and W i star. So, W i star R i k is together as a constant independent of k into W k. If you differentiate, it, you get 0, because no W k star. Are you following? So, these are the advantages I get by virtue of that trick I applied. This was, this was not there in the real case, because j factor was not there. So, I could not bring in j and multiply j by j and have something cancelled and make 0, is not it? This is the <laughs> ingenu mathematical ingenuity. Bring in the and make it compact. Otherwise, I could carry out the, the derivation with you know every real der derivative with respect to real part even you separately and a more elaborate exercise. You will get, you will get, you will get, you will get the same result. Agreed. Uh, you will get the same result. Real will be same. Same winner expression will come up, isn't it? Provided I followed this model, the W star here and W and this W I'm finding out not W star I am finding out. So, this differentiation you can also do by uh, using what you call the chain rule like one That chain rule thing I know if you uh, then I have to prove that chain rule is valid under this definition. No, this morning I was thinking then I thought that okay first I have to prove it due to pos positive of type I could not work out the proof. So, I thought of going down to the basic, but if you want yes, apply the chain rule what he is saying is you know that if you have two more product f x into g x derive with x then f x into g prime x plus f prime x into g x, same thing you can do here w Hermitian r w, r w is a vector, w Hermitian is a vector, hold w r w and then multiply, I mean differentiate w h with respect to w k and whatever and vice versa. But then that theory that derivative of f x g x is f prime x g x plus f x g x prime, so I have to prove that 
that is exist that is valid al also in this modified definition of so since I didn't do that I am deliberately keeping okay avoiding that I am aware of that <laughs> one book that Farhan's book does that I remember now but he does not prove that part he assumes that that theory extends to this definition also it will but since I am not proving I do not want to you know I mean uh, do things where there is a mathematical gap that without proving some particular theory and all that I do not want to use that result. Mm. That is, there is no point in, I mean, there is nothing wrong if I do this elaborate exercise. So, this part goes to 0, all of you agree? This part will go to 0. Now, comes here. So, this part I work out separately. W k star Once again, if you take out the k case separately out of the summation, what you have is j not equal to k w j plus j equal to k case or k k w j k here w k star here which means mod w k square. Okay? First differentiate this, first differentiate this quantity here, this quantity will be wk. Obviously, twice this will come up, is not it? That is del will then reality what first twice this will come up. See what I do, you will not find any gap mathematically, you know. It might be looking a little elaborate. R k j w j and here mod w k square. Mod w k square, you see, if you differentiate, after all, what is this? You forget about this. Once you consider z is a function of x and y, z is x plus j y, mod z square is x square plus y square. So, if you differentiate with respect to x, you get 2x, with respect to y, 2y. So, put in that formula 2x plus j 2y, that is 2 into z. So, same thing 2 into w k will come up. 2 R K K W K and now you combine the two K was missing here K has come back here K K S is not it. So, this is twice R K J J from 0 to N W J and what is this K S row of R you are spanning scanning the row K S row j equal to 0 means first column, j equal to 1 means second column and multiplying also simultaneously by this. So, k through a part times this vector or w that will give you derivative with respect to w k. So, with respect to other w's also other rows times the vector. So, that means if you want to do together in the del form of that factor w transpose the sorry w Hermitian or w what we will get is twice or w w this will give us w vector this was the kth row. So, k it could be first row, second row, third row depending on the choice of k putting all together it becomes twice rw. Hmm? So, now we put back in that formula derive the full filter. This is what we were this is where we were okay. and we have to differentiate this with respect to that is del I have to apply now del del epsilon I mean I should not have written epsilon n because it is actually you can see now that time I wrote epsilon n because I did not prove stationarity, but you can see it is independent of n. So, now you back to epsilon square. So, you have to apply del epsilon square <coughs> with respect to w. This will go independent of w. This is going no this is not going this is giving rise to 2 p is not it? This is giving rise to 0 this is giving rise to and this is plus this is giving rise to twice r w that equal to 0 that means <coughs> will give us equal will give us to what twice r w minus twice from here you get this part twice p and that you equal to 0 vector obviously 
you will get that optimal filter same as before or inverse see only thing is do not use this filter, but use the conjugate components of then things will work. So, in a complex case mind you there is a difference actually filtering you are not using this optimal one, but the conjugate value ok, but you are evaluating this you get the same expression. So, instead of all complex, I have taken d n complex which is d, this d n, d n is complex in general which is d, d n is complex everything is complex. I have taken mod d n square you see, I do not know, I mean everything is complex here, 0 mean, stationarity is valid, joint deal stationary, WS all those things are fine. Uh -huh. No, 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 you can construct, you see in communication system, most of the modern modulations you know they use two components, I component and Q component and together it goes, is not it. So, that symbol is a complex symbol, when you transmit, ok, basically you transmit one waveform, but when you recover the signal out of it, there are two components and they are treated in the complex variable way, okay. i and j, is not it. So, there if you want to develop an equalizer or you have a complex equalizer, which will be like this. Complex cases are our, our construction by for our convenience. That both are absorbed in one here now. Ah, one is zero. Okay. All right. So so far is the I derive. So I derived. I gave you the complex, more general case, complex version of uh, winner filter. Now again, I want to do steepest descent here. I don't want to. I don't know how to compute an inverse. So I want to do steepest descent. Once again, epsilon squared is a real function of what? of how many variables 2 into n plus 1 variables 2 into n plus 1 variables real part imaginary part real part I mean like that. So, again there it is a co quadratic function of all those real and imaginary parts. So, it, it has got a unique minimum everywhere will be going up. So, I can apply the steepest descent. So, I have to take the gradient with respect to real part also imaginary part also for each variable and going the opposite direction is not it. So, suppose this is epsilon square suppose I have, I have got only one weight to tell you I have got only one weight w which is say w r plus j w i capital R w r plus j w i epsilon square is a real function of this but it is a quadratic function is not it. So, at any iterate what I have to do at any point of iteration, I have to differentiate with respect to because it is a real function of W R also W I also. So, I have to differentiate with respect to W R which is a W I and going the opposite direction, is not it? Going the opposite direction that means W R I have to go in the opposite direction. So, mu minus mu by 2 times this, this term will come up. So, W real part if you want to do real part you want to update the real part, you should have things like this, is it? From i theta it you go to i plus 1 by this and this will be evaluated at w r equal to w r i or you can put w equal to w i does not matter, because when w i obviously it will w r i and similarly there is no vector here, I am thinking only single case, no point in w i But once again, instead of having two equations, I have to flop them. My i plus 1 is net weight is this plus j times this. Net weight, net filter weight at the i plus 1 is iterate the net filter weight w i, i plus 1. What is that? w r i plus 1 plus j w i i plus 1. 
what was W i? I it iterate W i was W r i plus J W i i, is not it? I dealt with them separately because after all epsilon square is a real function of both W r W i. So, you go in the stupid descent manner. Consider real part separately, i h to i plus 1 h, imaginary part separately, i h to i plus 1 h, and go in the opposite direction of respective gradient. But suppose I do not want to spend so much of space, I have to write the two equations simultaneously. So, I multiply this side by j, add, I mean, right, left hand side and right hand side both by j here, and add from top, add with top. So, what I will get on the left hand side total weight, here it is total weight and mu y 2 is real, mu is real, okay, that is important, mu is real and constant same, important thing is mu is same for the real and imaginary part, that is common and then use my definition, del epsilon square del w r plus j times del epsilon square del w i, so that is same as del w at w equal to w i, okay. so this is the underlying thing. I could as well have just written down this expression. I follow the same stupidity and procedure and go in the opposite direction of gradient, but that is not really mathematically very sound. I have to see what it is. This is not a function of this is actually this, this derivative is my creation. Actually, this epsilon square is a real function of so many variables, real part also, imaginary part also, and I must do the stupidity descent on each. Then I am saying instead of uh, doing like this, I want to combine them. And I guess this depends decent thing. It's okay. So you can extend it. W i plus one, the multivariable case, multi weight case. W i minus mu y two. Del comes now. Okay. I can easily generalize this. I'm generalizing, and this gradient also we have found out in the previous minimization procedure, is it? This is the gradient. You put that back, 2, 2 cancels. So, what do you get is simply mu into T minus R W i. And then to go to LMS from here, what do you do? You can first make it online by switching from I to N, but still you are using P and R, no real data, only thing you are running the data and looking at your watch. But I am saying I want to use real data and again replace R by X N X Harbician N. Please see, R is not X N X transpose, X N X Harbician N. Please see some the difference now. And this is X N d star n, right? If you put them back here, you can see quickly w n plus I will just finish in one or two minutes plus mu x n d star n, x n d star n here and x x Hermitian. So, x is common, bring it out in both x n is in the, in the common thing, right? the first. So, you take out x n, the x d star n remains here minus x Hermitian n and w, but w n now, i has been replaced by n. And what is this quantity? We know by what this definition <coughs> w h x is y. So, x h w is y star, Hermitian of y, when y is scale as y star. This quantity is y star n, <coughs> that means d n minus y n star of that, so e star n. So, this is the complex LMS algorithm e star n. Okay. Other steps are simple, filtering step that is uh, write down the steps quickly, just this will take one minute only. You first find out y n, y n is w h n, mind you, you have to write w h n. Filtering requires W H in X N E N D N minus Y N. Next step is W. You have used current weight. Now go for the next weight from this. That is 
mu times x bar n x sorry x vector e star n for n equal to 1 to final n and you can take some initial value w 0 is w init ok. So, that is all. So, that is all for today. So, the complex elements algorithm we will start from here in the next class. Thank you very much.